Hey everybody, it's Timothy Stone Dancer Coleman. We're here with another episode of the Colors of Sound podcast. I'm so excited today to introduce you to an amazing gentleman who is in multiple types of industries, who uh, has so many things going for him that uh, it's even better for me to let him explain, you know, kind of his past, his uh, path and his trajectory. Chef LeVar. Chef, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Tim, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. I really, really appreciate you being here. There's so many things to cover because you have accomplished so many things uh, in your lifetime. And, and I know that uh, from knowing you, the best is yet to come, right? So, so, so we're, we're on our way moving forward. So for the audience, I want you to please give us a quick introduction to where are you from? Where do you currently live? And uh, what do you currently do? So again, my name is Chef LeVar and uh, I grew up in the South Bronx, um, moved around a little bit in the Bronx, um, you know, had a chance to, to go to high school and went to culinary school um, at about 18, 19 years old. Um, and then I started working uh, for some nonprofits uh, throughout New York City and doing some Meals on Wheels programs. And I think that kind of uh, started my path to um, giving back to the community because um, being able to um, prepare meals and distribute meals for homebound um, seniors throughout New York City, both in the Bronx and in uh, Spanish Harlem um, was really eye-opening for me and really um, gave me an opportunity to see how food plays such a large part in um, our culture and just in the overall um, city and the daily movement of the, the city. Um, so I started to see um, how can I give back and the pandemic kind of opened up a, uh, I guess a get some uh, chefs along and on board with me. And we prepared meals and we started our first um, food giveaway um, in the Bronx on 149th Street. And then I had an opportunity to work with some other chefs. And then we did another event in Harlem for Thanksgiving. And we did another event for Mother's Day. And they just started to gain some some momentum and some popularity to people was like, hey, man, you should start a foundation. We want to give. We want to, you know, we want to do this. So that's really where I am right now, um, trying to focus on giving back. Um, sometimes you see chefs and all you really see is, you know, you just see them on television or you see them, uh, on their social media, but I want to be a chef that leaves a legacy of philanthropy and, and giving back to the community. I always tell people, you know, I can't be in my house, um, eating shrimp and lobster, knowing that there's people out there that haven't eaten all day. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the way I look at it and anything I can do to give back, um, that's what that's what the next step is, just finding some ways to continue to give back. So that's really dope, right? Like, I mean, there are very few people in our society um, who, when they start to experience, um, you know, success, there are very few people who automatically have it in them innately to immediately start to think about, okay, I'm experiencing this, but now how do I automatically start giving back at the right. same time, right? Right. So, so I want to take a step back. How did you even get interested in cooking? Where did that come from? Was that something that was with you as a kid or did somebody come along that you started to see in the kitchen or, or you experienced in the world and, and that came about? Like, how did that start? Well, it started with my mom and my great grandmother. Um, you know, Sunday Sunday dinner was a staple in in the home, and dinner was ready at three p.m. You know, we didn't eat dinner at eight nine o'clock. You know, we ate dinner around the dinner table, and we 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 it was eat your vegetables, and you're not you can't get any dessert to eat your vegetables. You know, so I grew up in a household where one eating together was important. And being able to touch base with one another and kind of decompress with one another and and just having that, that moment of fellowship with family um, was important. And that kind of started my culinary journey because, you know, what kid doesn't love food and, you know, cooking with mom and cooking with, with my, grand, my great grandmother um, 
I just had an opportunity to be exposed to uh, food in a way that was um, also, oh, I'm sorry, also through church, you know, going to church. I spent a lot of time in church. So, you know, after church service, you know, there was always a meal being prepared, you know, so we would come together and we would eat after church. And and um, every year at church, um, they would have what was called a um, international dinner. Mm-hmm. And since our community, as far as West Indian, we had people that were from Haiti. We had um, uh, 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 Hispanic um, members. We had um, African-American and so forth and so on. That gave everyone an opportunity to bring a dish. Um, and we would have about 15 different um cuisines representing different regions of the world nice. and it was just a really really good time and people looked forward to it hundred you know some people you don't see them all year but this one event <laughs> you know you know anyway. some people just show up you know but who does that you know that's food right. food does that and that's that's the beauty and that's one of the things that i love about food because food brings people together you know you might not see a family member all year but you can pretty much guarantee that thanksgiving that person will will, will, will probably be there so just the, my mom my great grandma they were my inspiration um behind food so they, that really started my journey with, with with my culinary journey that's dope that's dope so i know that this is this is the quintessential thing that all chefs hate to be asked right what's your favorite thing to cook <laughs> what do you what is the thing like if somebody said what are like two of chef lavar's like signature dishes what would what would you say um what would i say i don't know um <laughs> because um i've i've been asked a lot um what do you cook the best mm-hmm. and i felt like if it was only one thing i cooked the best that limits me and puts me in a box Mm, so, yeah. for instance, if I did, you know, a uh, 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 beef bolognese um, very well, I'd be just known for that. Right. But why not be known for beef bolognese and, 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 and other Italian dishes as far as, you know, being able to prepare things in other cuisines throughout the world? Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to be versatile and have a repertoire to where I, I I don't know. Sometimes I feel like people get disappointed when I don't have an answer because they say, well, what do you cook the best? I was like, I, I don't know. Like I can cook anything, well, you yeah. know, so, I so challenge I know, myself. Right. So I know you can cook a, a ton of things. Right. So I, so mm-hmm. just so the audience knows there was a day when mm-hmm. I got a chance to shadow chef. Right. And I saw yes. him, he's the executive chef of, of more than one location. And, and so mm-hmm. I shadowed him for a moment and, and I saw him prepare like a ton of different things. So <laughs> I wouldn't say, what do you cook the best? I, I think, what do you love to cook? Right. Is, is a better question. Maybe that's a better right? question. <laughs> yeah. That's a better question. So yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the things that, you know, because food does bring us together. Right. Like I know yeah. that there are certain things that when my mom, you know, when I go back home to the Midwest and my mom cooks, there are certain things that are like heartwarming and like so yeah. fulfilling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like yeah. what are a couple of things that that you love to cook um, while the audience still understands that that you're a multi-talented person? Like b- being a chef, mm-hmm. we're only talking about one lane right. of all the things that that you do so we're going to move over to like some of those other things but right. um but like it, what's that heartwarming thing that when you start going for it you're like mm-hmm, figuring <laughs> I, would, it. I would i would i would i would say thanksgiving yeah. those thanksgiving that soul food comfort food you know and that's something that um i do alone um when my family when we would have thanksgivings together it's been a while you know due to the pandemic but when we have thanksgiving together you know sometimes you have you know, your aunt she wants to bring this dish and this one wants to bring i said uh-uh no i'll cook everything don't everybody <laughs> yeah, just come right. and eat because it's like well if somebody messes up the mac and cheese thanksgiving's ruined you know <laughs> so at least at least i know that the mac and cheese is going to be good at least i know yes. the yams are going to be good yes. so those are like staples for thanksgiving day so we can't have somebody you know freestyle and so i would just kind of do things on my own so thanksgiving and comfort food and soul food is really something that i'm just in the zone and i'm just like you know focused on i love it all right so so let's shift gears a little bit right so building on um you know, the things that are to come 
as people begin to see your empire take form, I know, so we've got, you know, Chef LeVar as the chef, but we also have Chef LeVar as the upcoming author, right? We know that, that well, I know you're working on uh, a cookbook. So mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for that and, and what you hope to share with people, you know, what you hope that for, uh, for the audience to receive as they read through your cookbook, as they prepare some of the things that, um, that you've selected uh, to be in the book. Well, the, the cookbook really focuses on dishes that are um, really well-known dishes and kind of classics and staples, um, but also uh, manageable. A lot of mm -hmm. times, you know, sometimes you, you, you see uh, dishes on television or magazines and we, we, we're wowed, but we don't feel like we can accomplish that because um, through a picture or a video, it just seems like so much is going on and there's so many different details and components to a dish. Right. So in the recipes, um, I try to keep the recipes, um, you know, seven to eight ingredients tops, you know, mm -hmm. so one of people who are, um, you know, uh, worried about costs, you know, they're not breaking the bank to prepare this dish, but also offering some alternatives. If you can't use, you know, lobster meat, you can use, you know, langoustine. If you can't use that, you can use shrimp. You know, so having different options, you know, in a in a cookbook or substitutions, um, and it it it'll only have about maybe fifteen um, recipes in it to start. Um, and also it'll be some of my favorites incorporated into the book. Some of my, you know, shrimp and grits is a, is a, is a classic, oh, yeah. but not being afraid to, um, think outside the box, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Anyone can make shrimp and grits, but, you know, step outside the box and use some smoked Gouda cheese instead, mm -hmm. instead of just sprinkling some, um, you know, just some regular American grated American being a little adventurous. When it comes to food, I, I feel a lot of times um, we play it safe. Um, yeah. I, I go out to eat with people sometimes and they order just the most simplest, just the regular thing. It's like, you know, food is an experience. You know, when yeah. you go to dine, dining for me is an experience. Um, I like to go to different restaurants, but I went to eat yesterday and I said, I'm going to be a little adventurous and I'm going to try something, you know, that I don't, I don't usually try. And sometimes it's a hit or miss, but that's the, but at least you had that experience. That's right. With food. food is such, such a personal relationship. It's, it's like, it's like meeting a, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend for the first time. You kind of don't know what to expect. You see something on the outside, but yeah. until you really spend time and really, you don't know. And then sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, but then sometimes like, wow, you know, this is a really <laughs> cool experience. So yes, yes, yes. Adventure. <laughs> like I always tell, yeah. tell, you know, my nieces and nephews always go for the adventure, right? Yeah. I think one of the things that, that you said really triggers something for me because you, you're talking about when we go out to eat, um, you know, there are a lot of people who play it safe because they're like, oh, well, I already know what I like. I'm just going to stick with this. Mm -hmm. Right. And and my father was one of those people where mm -hmm. he didn't really adventure out to a whole bunch of types of options, no matter where we went. Like he kept mm -hmm. it real, real, real simple. Um, and, and I like what you're saying regarding um, taking a chance on something new. Right. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I received from your description of your cookbook and what's to come is, um, you know, that it's going to be for people who might be in high school, but it also could be for adults who have an empty nest. Like mm -hmm. here's a cookbook of recipes that are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and that are simple enough that anyone can get these ingredients from any economic status of your family mm -hmm. or your personal situation mm -hmm. and still enjoy a great meal. Right. Right. And, and I think, I think that's an important because, um, food is not as pretentious and as stuffy as the magazines or sometimes social media can make it appear to be. Um, there are ways that you can create, some lavish, elegant dishes without mm -hmm. breaking the bank yes. and can also offer um, a wow factor for those who are 
um, eating the meal. So I think it's important to have a combination of just being um, realistic and and being authentic and not having something, you know, so out of, you know, out of out of bounds that people feel intimidated and they won't want to give it a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So so we have chef, the chef, we -hmm. have chef, the author. Mm -hmm. And then soon we have Chef, the television star, right? So So talk to us about, like, in your mind, the development of your show. And and I know it's in process and pre-production right now, Mm -hmm. but, like, what is it that you're shooting for with the show? What is it, you know, give us, like, a quick little snippet of, like, what's something we might see when we tune in? (laughs) So I I don't know I, I I'm I'm probably dating myself and uh, but years ago there there used to be a show um on channel I believe it was channel sixty eight or sixty nine and it was called Video Music Box mm, yeah, and yeah, yeah. anybody can kind of get a little opportunity to kind of showcase their talent and they had little videos and things like that and I think it would come on super late at night so most of the time we would miss it because you know we were too young to stay up that late and watch it. But it was it was an opportunity for artists to showcase um, their talent, and that was something that I was really interested in, and tried to figure out a way to merge food and music, because mm-hmm. that's something that you don't really see, um, and not only just food and music, but also culture, because those are to me are the three things that bring people together, that yes. breaks barriers. Music, you a lot of times you don't really see um, a lot of different nationalities and races coming together until it's music, yes. until it's a concert. Definitely. Same thing with sports, same mm-hmm. thing uh, with restaurants. A lot of times you won't see a, a number of uh, various cultures and ethnicities until there's some type of food involved. I know right now the San Gennaro Festival is going on downtown and, and Manhattan. Everybody's down there. Everybody from all the walks of life and races and ethnic ethnicities are down there partaking in a food festival that is predominantly uh, uh, a, a, of the Italian heritage. Mm-hmm. But it's it's bringing everyone together because that's what food does. So nice. that's one of the things I wanted to do with the show is bring music, food, and culture together and also giving um, up and coming artists, whether it's in the culinary world or whether it's in the um, music and arts and culture, mm-hmm. um, an opportunity to kind of come and kind of speak on what's, what they're working on and give them an outlet. Just talk about things like mental health, mm-hmm. um, talk about things about their journey, their pathway, their career. So that's, that's pretty much what, what, what the show is going to be. I love it. I love it. Thank yes, you. I receive it. That's going to be great. That's going to be great. <laughs> and I mean, I, I also love being here at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. a lot of folks are, you know, this is the type of interview where where people uh, will come back years later and be like, oh, mm-hmm. wow, that's Chef, mm-hmm. right? Like right. before right. I knew him as the, the global brand, right. you know, the, the global TV star, the global this and right. that. So, so as we begin to, to wrap this up, I would, mm-hmm. I would love to hear from you in terms of your legacy. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I know you're a person who barely sleeps. I know you're a person mm-hmm. with like multiple, <laughs> multiple things that you're doing, um, you're always out feeding the community. You're mm-hmm. always creating opportunities to to uh, allow people to experience great food for free, um, you know, yes. in, in cases where they might be underserved or, or yeah. in communities that are underserved. Um, <clears throat> What does your legacy look like, right? Like we think five, 10, 15 years from now, what is it that you you seek to accomplish in these next 10 years um, that you hope people will receive? Well, with the um, feeding people, uh, with that component, that is really uh, the, the legacy that I want to leave. Um, as far as being an inspiration um, to show people how simple it is. A lot of times I get phone calls from people and they are saying, hey, you know, chef, I want to feed, you know, some people for Thanksgiving. I'll just use it as an example. Or I want to feed some people for Christmas. Mm -hmm. How do I do it? I said, well, how do you feed yourself, right? You prepare some food, you package it, 
and then you you may carry your lunch with you to work. Do it the same concept, but maybe this time do it for 10 people as opposed to, you know, and then later on you scale, you call friends and you get families and that 10 turns into 20 and that 20 turns into 40 and so forth and so on. So if I can use my platforms to encourage people you know, if we if we one person can't change the whole world, but if one person can get another person and that person can get another person, then you'll have a bunch of people trying to change the world. And That's the right. impact, the impact will be noticeable. You'll yeah. see the impact. And I'm a true believer that everybody can do something. That's right. Everybody can do something. Everyone. All right. Granted, everyone may not be able to cook, but everyone can help in some way, shape or form, whether it's through monetary, whether it's through time, whether it's through hands. Uh, sometimes we we uh, we forget how important our hands are to, you know, volunteer at our local soup kitchens or volunteer at our local Meals and Wheels programs and donate some time. So that's really the legacy I wanna leave is just giving back, teaching, uh, teaching young people, I teach at at at, at the, the college now as well. So I have an opportunity to to teach. And one of the things that um, we've been talking about is our mental health mm -hmm. and being able to um, navigate life as a culinarian, as a teen, as a young adult, as a parent, as a single parent. And those are the conversations that we are that are not being had. Um, in the culinary world. Sometimes we just see the glamor and the lights and the camera and action, but it's like, there's a person under this apron. There's a That's father, right. there's a father, there's a mother under this apron. And if y'all, you know, sometimes you just see the shell, the outside, but we wanna be able to deal with the, the underlying issue so that we can be uh, um, productive and we can help people along our journeys as well. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. Listen, I applaud you for everything that you've done that people will continue to discover along the way. I love how low key you play it. You know, I've seen some of the things, you know, if folks want to follow you on Insta, uh, it's at Chef LeVar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to make sure that, that people tune in and check out what it is that you actually are doing, because what's great about your approach to who you are and who you are in the world is that it is it is you are one of like the most least self-serving people i've ever Thank met you. and Thank i you. feel like everybody else it's like as if somebody shows up with a spotlight and you just take mm -hmm. your finger and you push it right back onto the community <laughs> right? Right. the spotlight is on them not on me right right and, right. and i appreciate right. that approach um Thank you. I know for a fact from from watching you that the community appreciates that approach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we look forward to the release of your book. We look forward to the release of your television show. Um, and, and I really personally look forward to all of the people in the world who continue to discover you. You know, on, on their day one, right? Your overnight success, right? Um, you know, as they begin to 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 experience um, a person who is a chef, who is a minister, who is a community servant, and and I appreciate you know that you took a minute to um, to be here with us on on the Colors of Sound podcast. I appreciate um, you know that you are you know we'll we'll share all the links and and all the things that you're doing in the community. Is are there any final thoughts? Is there anything else that you that you want to say uh, before we wrap up? No, I just want to thank you, Tim, for um, since we've met, you've been like one of my biggest supporters and one of my biggest coaches. Like Tim is like the coach, you know, he's the <laughs> life coach. You know, he's an amazing friend, just kind of like a brother. Um, and things like that don't happen very often. But being able to have somebody to kind of, you know, say, hey, I think this is good. No, let's try it this way, you know, and just give some real authentic and genuine feedback. You know, yeah. I, it's really much appreciated. Um, I'm learning from you. You know, and I, I sit down with my wife. I'm like, Tim showed me this. Tim showed me that. You know, let's do it. You know, so I'm I'm learning from you and I'm I'm just hoping that we continue to build off this relationship and Amen. this way, you know, just take, you know, this this journey together and we go from there. And we go from there, brother. Listen, I am I am I'm here 
And, and <laughs> whatever I can do, I am definitely going to do it. I'm committed to it. I believe Thank in you. you. And, and, you know, I also have had a chance to meet your amazing wife. And, and I love how supportive she is. Thank um, you. And, and yeah. just even from the second that I saw the two of you together, I was like, what a perfect couple. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I, you know, blessings Thanks, to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much again for joining us. And uh, I will let you know when this goes live. And, um, you know, we'll make sure that we do everything we can to make sure people know how to find you. Thank you so much, Tim. I much appreciate it, man. All right, my brother. Pleasure to speak with you. Have a beautiful day. Have a wonderful event. I know it's coming up soon and you got to go. I know you're probably like <laughs> dicing stuff, but like, you know, off camera right now. All right. All right. So uh, have a great day, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, man. God bless you. Thank All you. All right. Man. God bless. All right. Bye-bye.